Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining um, our November Pi Data Chicago event. And today, we are so pleased to in invite Arish and Tyler to present a topic of the platform for simulation modeling and state-of-art AI applications. And now I'm transferring the presentation to Arish and Tyler. Thank you. OK, thank you so much for the introduction, um, as you stated. I'm Arash Madhavi. I'm the simulation AI program lead at AnyLogic North America. Um, I'm going to cover the conceptual concepts about uh, applied applications of AI today with a little bit of introduction to AnyLogic and AnyLogic Cloud. Tyler. And I'm Tyler Wolf Adam. I also work at AnyLogic North America and simulation specialist. And I'll be showing some of the uh, applied portions of this presentation. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, let me start. So um, we are going to briefly talk about simulation modeling, any logic software as a development environment that lets you build simulation models. Um, then I will briefly touch upon any logic cloud, a platform that lets you to run and deploy your simulation models. And then I kind of move to the main topic of this talk, which is simulation and AI, and we talk about three main applications in, in this specific space. And at the end, I will share some resources with you so you can follow up and learn more about it. So this is going to be a very fast paced uh, presentation. And for each of these topics, we are going to briefly touch upon them. Each one of these topics needs a lot more time than what I'm going to spend on, but uh, it gives you an overview of what is possible with any logic and um, combination of simulation and AI. Okay, let's start with simulation modeling. If you're new to this concept, the idea that I wanna kind of uh, convey here is the all types of models, the main thinking behind them that you're dealing with a uh, system or a real scenario that you wanted to make some changes to improve it, um, kind of uh, make some changes uh, to get to a better um, state. And um, instead of going directly to the deployment of your uh, kind of ideas or scenarios or solutions, you can go to this world of models, which is this upper uh, part of this uh, shape and build a model, a representation of your system. Do your testing there. When you're satisfied with, this, with the um, kind of the outcomes that you see in the simulated or modeled version of your reality, you're happy with the scenarios that you're looking at, the solutions that you deployed in the um, uh, modeled version, you deploy them in reality. And hopefully if your models are representative enough of the reality, your solution will work the same as well and you get a result. So you are basically with simulation, you are and take you to this um, risk-free world um, and let you to experiment and learn from different uh, ideas without risking and dealing with all the uh, problems that you will encounter if you directly go uh, to deployment of a solution. How simulation works in a nutshell is um, you can imagine it as a, um, a tool that gives you insight into the future um, compared to other tools, simulation models are really good in handling uh, time and causal dependencies. And you can definitely add um, uncertainty and stochasticity or randomness into your model, which again is very unique. These are all pretty unique features of simulation models. Um, and it, they are highly visual. It helps you both you as a modeler and the um, people who are using your simulation or kind of uh, end users of the simulation, decision makers or who are communicating, you are communica communicating with about simulation models and your solutions to kind of un better understand what's going on. You can convince and communicate with it. Um, as you see here, the idea that we wanted to showcase here is real applications of simulation usually need to be connected to some sort of so, some sort of data source. Let's say relational databases. You have some rules that define how that simulation or that system works, and you can simulate it, visualize it, and see the forecast, or you see you gain some insights about what will happen into the future. Okay. Um, let's take a look at some example models for some of you who are who might be new to this 
platform. And again, I'm going to kind of show you the tip of the iceberg, some examples so you get to see different applications. This is by no means comprehensive. Uh, we need more time for it, but you can look into the references I will show you later. Okay, um, any logic as a tool, what I'm showing here is a development environment. So you, you use a visual graphical interface to build and set or communicate the rules of the system that you want to build uh, to this simulation software. And then um, you can run those simulation models. So I'm jumping into some uh, models to kind of show and I'm going to run them one by one. So you get to see different examples of simulation models that are built with this. Uh, platform. So the first one is a fulfillment center. So AnyLogic has some like vertical libraries for specific applications. This is an application of material handling library, which is a specialized library for simulating conveyor systems and transporters, crane, things that kind of help you to move material in, in um, some sh in, in some shape or form. And as you can see, this tool is very capable of simulating very complex geometries and rules in these warehousing distribution center scenarios, or it could be anything even like a, if you have a, like a manufacturing setup that uses conveyor systems as a means of moving material in it. Um, and again, in, in, in all of these models, you can build uh, different ways of looking into what is happening in 2D, 3D way. You can build custom dashboards and so on. So I'm moving to the next model. Um, this is a, a model about an autoclave uh, concrete factory. This is um, an example of manufacturing setup uh, with lots of um, you know, custom and very detailed uh, operations. Um, um, that are happening here. Uh, one other thing that you can kind of observe as a common theme is you can build some form of uh, UI elements uh, that you call controls that lets you to communicate with the simulation during the, the runtime or at the initialization, what is the scenario that you wanted to kind of look at at that point. Again, you see a 2D uh, view of this. I can go to a 3D view. Um, I can see all um, different uh, kind of steps of how um, a concrete slab goes through uh, from pouring a mix up to a time that it goes through an autoclave and then delivered to uh, like a, gets to a like a shipping dock to get delivered later on. And as I said, you can build all types of custom uh, user interfaces to see what's going on, things that show you like time series of the outcomes, utilizations. Um, you know, different states of each component of the model. And, um, you know, depending on what you're looking for, you can kind of see everything that is happening here. For example, for each of these equipments that are here, like robots, cranes, things that are helping the operation to happen, we can look into how much time they spend in a specific state. Okay, the next model that I wanted to show you is called product delivery. This is a supply chain example. And there are many like features of any logic that, that are here. I'm not talking about methodologies and like how simulation models are built under the hood, but this is an example of something called, we call multi-method model, which uses all kind of possible um, simulation paradigms in one model. So you can mix them together to build complex models, but with very natural and elegant structures. And this is one example of that. It uses GIS map. It has connections to databases. So the locations and attributes of these objects are read from a database. Um, you have multiple models that are happening. These trucks are moving on real routes. Um, based on the GIS coordinates that we are reading from um, OpenStreetMap in this specific case. And inside each of these manufacturing centers, you have other models that are happening locally inside of them. And what you see as a supply chain is the kind of uh, all of them working together and the interconnected model that has all of these parallel uh, objects or sim local simulations happening at the same time, communicating with each other. And what you get as the outcome of the overall like operation or the supply chain is the emerging outcome of all of those interactions. Again, I'm just going through these examples super fast so you can see um, some examples. One other thing that I want to show you, one of the classic example of simulation modeling is call centers. But uh, what I want to show you here is the capability of having um, 
you know, simulations that are connected through networks and A-Logic has that. So each of these circles is a call center. So it's not just one call center. You're looking at 16 call centers that are connected through this network and the kind of the overflow of calls are kind of sent to another call center that is connected to that node and that also has some capacity to um, kind of handle the incoming calls. And there, as I said, there are tons of levers and kind of controls to build into these models, depending on what you want. So you can build these custom UIs to communicate with the model. So these things could be automated with experiments. So you can look into all types of, you know, experiments to uh, look into different combinations. But if you want things, these things to be manual and presentable in the UI, you can do that as well. Okay, so a couple of other examples before um, I kind of switch to the next uh, uh, topic. Uh, Any logic, as I said, it has some um, um, kind of custom or vertical libraries for specific applications. I showed you material handling. This is a pedestrian example. So pedestrian library, uh, again, simulates movement of pedestrian inside a space. So you can see the density map. Um, and what is happening in this, like, there are many useful applications for this, for designing of the layout, evacuations, emergency cases, uh, social distancing, and so on and so forth. So that's another library that you can look at. We also have uh, a library for traffic simulation. We call it um, Road Traffic Library. This one is also... Um, you know, lets you to build micro simulations of uh, specific sections of um, a road. And it's very detailed. You have all the cars, car, cars are capable of knowing, uh, kind of understanding their surroundings. They know how to take over, accelerate, decelerate, keep the kind of um, safe space between each other and so on. And similar to the other models that I showed you, you can look into the density map. You can even, because this is an agent-based model approach, which each element or object in the model is a kind of a, an object that has behaviors and attributes. So you can even look or kind of watch the simulation moving forward from the perspective of one of those cars if you want to. Um, and as I said, you always have these custom dashboards or kind of graphs to showcase what's going on with the model. And this is the actual model behind this thing. Uh, as I said, I don't have enough time to go through how we build these models, but uh, just as an overview of what is possible with any logic. And lastly, because it's relevant to the situation that we are experiencing right now, I wanted to showcase uh, an, a model that is kind of related to epidemiology. Um, and this is an agent-based version of it. So how like some infection is going to be this kind of pass between people in a community and the effect of these like individuals and the uh, their um, need for treatment, how it's going to be kind of sent to a specific, uh, for example, like say a treatment center or a hospital and how that demand could affect the, uh, the outcome. For example, I run it again. So I kind of uh, decrease the number of beds that we have here. So this disease won't go away because we cannot treat enough number of people to kind of contain the, um, the disease. And it goes back uh, in kind of uh, in, in like a cyclic fashion. So there will still be some people that are infected and the infection comes back. So what you hear in the news about the um, you know, forecast of the number of like, how, how many people might die because of this, how many people might get infected in the future. Majority of them are using some form of simulation. So that's also I wanted to show at the end. Okay, now that we have a very kind of high level understanding of what AnyLogic can do, I kind of wanted to move to AnyLogic Cloud and show you one example and what it is. So when you're building a model, uh, what I showed you, you were in this development environment. And sometimes you wanted to just run the model, share it with somebody, put it into a, you know, a, on a server, makes, makes it accessible to a large number of people, or you want to just use that model as a backend of, let's say, another custom built website or an app or you know, um, some form of uh, data science workflow. So you don't care about how the model works. You wanna use it as a backend of something else. Uh, for all of these purposes, um, we have something called AnyLogic 
cloud that lets you to upload your models to. So it's kind of built into the software. So each model has this run configuration setup that easily lets you to set, select the input and output of the model, click on it, and then you end up in um, any logic cloud, which is this platform. And here, uh, you see your own models that you uploaded. You can also see like public models that uh, our community have uploaded here. I'm going to kind of randomly pick uh, one of them. Let's see what we have here. You know, so we have like, um, and, and some of them are, are, are ours and some of them are like from the community, just like, and the way they work is you click on the model, let's say the product delivery that I just showed, and you can actually build experiments here. It gives you a dashboard to, to see the results. So you can set the inputs to the model uh, if you have any, and then um, you kind of run the model on a server or a cloud provider and see the results. If you wanted to see the animation similar to what I showed in the desktop version, you have access to it and you can see it here as well. Um, and it's kind of identical to what you see in the uh, desktop version, but everything that I'm showing right now is not running on my machine. It's running on AWS at the moment. So this specific uh, uh, cloud version. And uh, if you're interested, you can kind of purchase this and um, kind of install it on your own on-premise servers or on any cloud provider that um, you're working with. Okay, so with that, we kind of got to see a variety of um, uh, the, the main uh, software that we have, AnyLogic, and its companion, AnyLogic Cloud, that lets you to run, share, and uh, kind of use your model in the deployment phase. Let's kind of move to the, the main topic of this discussion. When simulation and AI kind of come together to give us lots of um, um, application, real applications of these two, when we call it um, applied AI. So let's take a look at like three categories of use cases that we identified. So there, there might be some stuff that are some kind of, uh, um, it's, um, you know, we, we try to simplify the concepts, right? So it's not like a, very clear cut, but these three applications is going to give you a clear idea of what is possible in the intersection of these technologies. Um, I'm going to start, so as you see, we have generati ge uh, generating synthetic data, we have learning environment for enforcement learning, and we have test bed for trained AI. Um, let's start by generating uh, synthetic data. This is something that I'm not going to go through the details. Um, we are more focusing on reinforcement learning and um, test bed for uh, trained AI. But generating synthetic data is similar to the regular workflow of simulation, but the output of the simulation is not going to be analyzed directly. The idea is um, that's not the end goal of the simulation to get some data. The data that you get, you may want to mix it with real data as like a, to enhance your like a real data sets for like ML um, kind of scenarios, or you wanted to test some, um, like let's say AI algorithm or deep learning model on a data or on a scenario that doesn't exist. So you build this synthetic version of it and test it, or you might have a situation that you want the simulation model to be run on a very local, on a local basis, but the machines that you have are not capable of running those like kind of very demanding simulations. So you can generate the data, train an ML model based on those data, and then deploy those ML models on these common age de devices that we have right now that are commonly available and very cheap and are capable of running all types of like uh, neural networks, train neural networks. Um, so that's the idea here that I showed. Um, the next thing, which probably we spend a good amount of time here is, uh, is using simulation model or any logic as a training environment uh, for reinforcement learning. So any logic in this case becomes a platform that lets you build an environment that is similar to an environment that you get readily available from, let's say OpenAI gym, right? So there you get something, and, uh, Atari example, like a game or some uh, physical level model, card pole, or th those simple, like, uh, you know, control examples. But with any logic, you can build that environment from scratch based on what is 
your specific case and then use that as a training to be controlled by the AI. So that's the idea. Um, if you are kind of new to this topic, if you don't kind of uh, at high level, uh, the difference between a regular simulation and reinforcement learning is in re regular simulation. When you run the simulation, what I just showed you, you get the results, you might experiment with it, run it with different configuration and see the results. In reinforcement learning, the learning process is happening with an AI agent or a neural network that tries to communicate with this uh, training environment or the simulation and learn from it and learn how to optimally or near optimally control that uh, environment. Um, so in a conventional simulation, simulation alone is, is enough. In reinforcement learning, you need both the RL and RL agent and or AI agent and the simulation to work together to, to kind of train that AI agent to be useful uh, for deployment later, maybe in a real system. Okay, so how you can do this with any logic? There are two main ways to do it. Um, we partner with two platforms, Pathmine and Microsoft um, uh, Project Banzai. Um, both of these platforms let you to import any logic models into them, or there are other ways to connect them with each other and use their automated RL capabilities um, to learn a policy from these tools. So Tyler is going to showcase uh, Bonza in more detail in a minute. And the second uh, option is um, some a, a connector between any logic, as uh, I didn't mention this, but any logic is in Java. So if you wanted to connect it to majority of uh, RL setups that almost all of them are mostly in Python. So if you wanted to do that, you need a connector to establish this connection. And Tyler worked on uh, this connector called Alpine that he's going to talk about. And that is um, kind of let you to do that similar to a workflow that you have in uh, OpenAI gym. So with that, I um, switch, I ask Tyler to kind of uh, show us these two use cases and I come back and then we wanted to move to the, the next uh, use case. Perfect, thank you, Arash. Thank you. All right, so to start off, I'm going to show the Microsoft Project Bonsai platform. But in order to do that, we need a simulation model in order to train. So this is uh, a model that's available within uh, AnyLogic's set of example models, which if you don't know, if you go to help and then example models, AnyLogic has uh, like hundreds of various different example models for uh, different application areas. And this is just one of them that was adapted uh, for this uh, you know, purpose. So in this model, there's some products that come in, they see some resources, they get delayed for some time, and then they uh, get conveyed out of the, the process. Um, and it's, uh, the model works uh, by, uh, there are costs associated with different parts of the system. So if I go ahead and run this original model, so there are costs for both using the resources to have a product in the system, uh, in addition to um, being able to leave. So you can kind of see the, uh, how the different cost is distributed across each of the various steps. And down here, what you could do is you could change the, uh, for example, the number of resources or the delay time of the machine or the speed of the conveyor in addition to the arrival rate. And all of these things are going to factor into um, what the average cost per product is. So based on you know, what the attributes are, uh, the goal is to, to minimize the cost per product. So in order to train this on uh, an AI uh, a learning agent, um, you need to set up some, some parameters. So any logic as of the most recent version, which was actually released today, has an RL experiment where you can define your observations you could define your observations, in this case, the different parts of the system that you want the, uh, in this case, the brain to be able to observe. Uh, you also define what you want the brain to be able to control. In this case, the number of resources, the uh, machine uh, delay time, and also the conveyor speed, and then also some input to the, to the model. And then once you've set all of this up, you can, there's a button up here to export to the Microsoft Project Bonsai platform. And if I go to the website, uh, so if you go to bonds.ai, if 
If you have an Azure uh, subscription, you can get access to this platform and upload it to their model, uh, upload it to their, their platform, sorry. And so here you have an option to upload an AnyLogic model. So once you do that, your, plat your AnyLogic model is now on their platform and Bonsai has its own proprietary code, uh, code language called Inkling, which is um, kind of a, a special uh, language which allows you to kind of abstract away from AI, uh, you know, the very nuanced, bare to the metal kind of uh, application and kind of abstract away from it with these, with these concepts. So you can define all your different parts of the system and then train, set up a curriculum where you set up different lessons and kind of break the overall goal of what you're trying to do down to simpler steps where the brain can learn. And then once you've started that training and it's progressed and it's, you know, performs seemingly well, you can host uh, the brain on as an Azure web app. And then at that point, um, it is exposed in an endpoint that you can access and it has its own uh, URL. If I go back to any logic, there is a um, bonsai connector object where you can paste that exported brain address and then go ahead and run the model. And then as you do that, there is some uh, setup that's created that allows it to um, call upon the exported brain. So now the, the model is currently paused. And if I change the input, in this case, the uh, arrival rate, it will query the brain for what it should do. In this case, it you know, chose these four attributes and it did so in such a way that it you know, minimized the, the cost per product. And every time you see the model running, it's advancing six months at a time. So in this way, you know, no matter what the uh, kind of arrival rate is set to, it chooses a configuration such that it uh, minimizes the arrival rate. So this is kind of an automated way using uh, Project Bonsai to, to train your simulation models. And this isn't even, uh, limited to any logic with that exported brain, you can then use it in any other application as well. Moving right along, um, there is the LTime library. So in case you don't want to uh, have a, either a reliance on some external platform or you wanna get more uh, customization with your training, to do that, you would need to be able to uh, kind of use your own reinforcement learning algorithm, algorithms or use a you know, native Python library to be able to run an exported uh, AnyLogic model. So for AnyLogic professional, uh, you can export your model as a standalone Java application, which can be run on any system that has Java on it. So the Alpine library allows you to connect to an exported uh, AnyLogic model and control it dynamically from within Python. So if I pull up uh, the documentation for it. So how it works is that, and I have a example of a supply chain model. So let me actually just pull that up. So in this example, it's just a simple supply chain model where there's a retailer, a wholesaler and a factory. And you can kind of set up the um, inventory policy uh, based on the, the input parameters and then kind of run the model um, to see kind of what the inventory levels are over time, the mean daily costs for each of the facilities. Um, if I advance the model, you can kind of see the, the system progressing uh, based on the customers that come into the system and request a product from the retailer and kind of the whole supply chain operation from there. So with Alpine, you can just export this model as a standalone Java application. And then using this library, so this is just a, a Python file which um, imports the, the Alpine library. It connects to the exported model, referencing that uh, the model.jar. And then you could do things like initialize the, uh, the model with uh, parameters. So here we have the inputs to the model able to be configured from Python. You can then reset the model, um, advance it for some amount of time, and then get some data sets or other attributes inside of this model. 
So if I go ahead, for example, and run this, you're able to uh, control your AnyLogic model uh, that's been exported entirely through um, uh, Python. So here's just a matplotlib library where it's kind of extracted the data sets from the AnyLogic model, and you're able to visualize that um, through here. So you can run your own experiment separate from any logic. In fact, you can then distribute this uh, exported model to your friends and family who uh, you know, know Python, and they can also run their own experiments and get their own outputs from the model. And so using this library, you have access to all the different attributes that are you know, contained within this model. But why this is useful, especially for RL, is that you might have a let's say, a, a traffic light model. So this is using our road traffic library, and this is a very simple model where cars come into the system, and then they uh, kind of leave the system, uh, you know, going straight the whole way. But the, the interesting component is that when this model is executed, the um, kind of the uh, uh, arrival rates for each of the directions are different over time. So if I go to the statistics, you can see that this rate preview shows that when the model starts up, the cars going north and, north and south are relatively low uh, rates per hour. And then it you know, slowly increases. And in the afternoon, it kind of peaks and exceeds what the east-west direction is going. Um, and so the overall goal is to minimize the, the mean time and system. And this is done through uh, the learning agent being able to control the traffic light. So within your AnyLogic model, specifically in the road traffic library, you could set up traffic lights and dynamically set up um, you know, timings for the, for the traffic light. So what we could do is instead of you know, using Microsoft Project Bonsai, we can export this simulation model, which has um, you know, some functions to be able to take some actions, getting observations, Calculating, calculating reward, et cetera, um, and then train a AI agent on that. So here's our Python script, as before importing that Alpine library. And then for simplicity, this is just using the stable baselines library. And then another part of this Alpine library is that it has a um, object which, um, you know, inherits the, the, the gym environment. And so there's kind of a custom gym uh, environment set up for you as part of this library. And so if you just pass the function names that you want to get your observation and your action and other attributes, you can then have this uh, environment as, as, as if it was a native gym environment. And so you could plug it into um, libraries like stable baselines and then run your uh, algorithms, and then export that at the very end. So using this library, you can not only set up your own experiments, but kind of embed it into um, you know, other, other libraries like TensorFlow or, or the like. And so that is a short summary of kind of what this uh, library could do in terms of the uh, reinforcement learning aspect of it. And with that, I will turn it back to Harash to continue where uh, he had left off. Okay, thank you so much, Tyler. Okay, so let's uh, go back to uh, the different types of applications of AI or intersection of AI and simulation. So we talked about synthetic data. Tyler showed us different ways of uh, connecting any logic with um, RL. Um, you know, setups and algorithms. So the third application or th th third category of applications is when you're using simulation as a test bed for trained AI. Um, basically at this point, your AI or like model is already trained and you kind of incorporate or embed it into the simulation. So why you wanted to do that? There are different use cases for this. So I, I put some examples of the use cases there. This, this is definitely not comprehensive, but these are some examples. Uh, one very common theme here would be that for simulation in case one, in, in conventional simulation, there will be some data point or like quantities that you have to specify for the system. For example, when you're simulating a hospital, 
hospital, you need to tell the model how long it takes for some for a patient to get the treatment before it leaves. So you need the length of stay. So there are different ways. So you can put a deterministic value or an expected value and say that that's the average, or you can put a distribution, which is very common. So it's a random distribution and depending on like each, each time that you need that value, you draw a number from a distribution. But what you can do with ML models, if you, if you have a very like a more sophisticated trained model that kind of is capable of forecasting how much time, for example, it takes for a specific type of patient to stay in a hospital, you can incorporate it into the simulation. And this kind of incorporation of forecasting models or um, kind of predictive models that are based on ML, uh, trained ML solutions um, could be incorporated into all parts of simulation models. So that's case one. Second case is um, um, sometimes you have a simulation model and some part or some component of the simulation is at physical level or very detailed um, things that you don't have access to and you don't know how that works, but you can train an ML model that that represents that behavior uh, or approximates that at some level. Let's say you have some chemical reaction inside blocks of concrete that you're moving in a factory and you wanted to know um, a specific uh, kind of like a physical attribute at any point of time. Um, so you can build an ML model that, that tells you for each block of concrete where it is in its life cycle. Uh, but the overall simulation shows you the movement of these blocks in the, um, let's say the autoclave the, uh, factory that I showed you at the beginning. So the third uh, option would be um, if you have, um, if you have a, like a, in, in reality, in a, in a real simulation that uh, you're in the real system that you're dealing with, there are some components that are already using deployed AI solutions. And you wanted to simulate that or build a simulation replica of that reality. And that reality already have these components. So for your simulation to be accurate, it should be able to kind of borrow some of those ML component and embed them into the simulation as well. So that's another reason that you want this capability to be in, the, in your simulation software. The fourth uh, example is, um, it is a very common broad um, uh, kind of uh, case when you when you're focusing and building an, an let's say an ML model or a, like a deep learning model, so you're testing it based on data, right? And everything about that that model is about a specific component of a bigger system. So let's say, for example, you wanted to forecast how long it takes uh, to uh, kind of underwrite a loan, but that that part is a it's one part of like a longer uh, um, kind of process. There are multi steps. You have a model for one part of it that gives you forecasting capability. If you wanted to see the overall picture and how that overall system will work when you deploy this uh, newly learned knowledge into the overall system and see how it's going to affect that, um, that is when you can simulate it with this result, with this uh, kind of in this case. So you, you train your model, you know it's one component. So for example, it gives you a better forecasting of your demand in a supply chain, but you want to know, okay, so with this uh, newly gained knowledge, how is going to affect my operation if I continue with the, um, the previous, for example, um, you know, inventory policy that I had? Is it going to impact it in a positive or a negative way now that I know more? Maybe I need to go back and adaptively change my um, inventory policy as well, right? So that's case four. Case five is just embedding ML solutions into simulation to visualize it. So ML models are basically math and it's hard to show like the effect of mathematical models. Uh, just, um, um, you know, it, it's hard to visualize them for people to see, okay, how is going to improve my operation? You can embed them into a simulation and simulate the effect so you can visualize and kind of get a more intimate uh, kind of understanding of what's going on. And case six is uh, kind of fell into what Tyler just showed us. So when you are doing your RL training at the end, you get a policy, which is like a, 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 like a trained ML model, basically, like a neural network that 
kind of uh, everything is um, kind of like it works like a function. You send the observation, it tells you what to do. It, it gives you the optimal actions to take. So you can bring back that trained uh, model into a simulation model and simulate it with this optimal control or near optimal control policy and see how good that policy actually behaves or what would be the effect of that policy. You, are, you can basically test your, the results of your RL training into this in the simulation to make sure that it works as expected. So these are the use cases, but the implementations are basically the same, regardless of what is the reason that you are doing this. The impl implementation is just about how you embed an ML model into a, a simulation. And there are many different ways to do it. Uh, we pick like two cases. We are, we are partnered with um, H2O.AI in case you are using their driverless AI technology, uh, you can natively incorporate the trained ML models from their like platform into any logic that Tyler will showcase in a minute. And the second approach is through a connector that Tyler developed called um, Pipeline that lets you again, communicate with Python um, code and in Python uh, code and you know, majority of trained models are going to be in Python. So it gives you that capability. There is a third option that is um, so in both of um, reinforcement learning and testbed for train AI that works with our cloud platform. We didn't show it here just for the sake of brevity, but these two cases, H2O.AI and pipeline are going to be the next um, part that Tyler is going to demonstrate. Thank you, Arash. Right. So um, for those that don't know, uh, H2O um, has a software called Driverless AI, which is an automatic machine learning platform where you can uh, interface through it either with a dashboard or through a kind of a Python library. Um, once you're done kind of, and you have a trained model, you can export that as a Mojo file. Um, and here we have an example of a product delivery model, which is just a, a supply chain model. But specifically, if I go into the model folder, you can see that there are two Mojo files which are loaded from, uh, which are downloaded from H2O. Um, in this case, if I go ahead and run it, you can see how the model makes use of that. Um, it's kind of a more uh, relevant model as it, you know, takes the uh, product delivery model that's part of any logic standard example models and it adds some uh, forecasts um, using, you know, with or without kind of COVID. Um, so with that, you can run the model and then it utilizes the uh, Mojo files for both um, kind of calculating different values, uh, such as like the, the temperature and also some other attributes, such as, you know, how long it takes to uh, uh, fulfill a, a product. And so this is kind of impacting dynamically within the simulation model, um, whereas you know the original uh, simulation model had uh, you know much less fidelity um, to it. So now it is able to be kind of you know further uh, made more accurate by these implementations. So that is H two O, and then the as far as the pipeline example. So pipeline is a custom library for any logic, which is currently on GitHub and is open source and is available for anybody to download. Um, within any logic, you can add your own uh, custom libraries that you can add, enabling you to kind of have your own custom objects that you can drag into various models. In this case, uh, this pipeline library is a, uh, provides a communicator object, which utilizes a uh, instance of Python, which is installed on your own system, and you configure it to choose, you know, which uh, version of Python that you want based on your system set setup. Um, and then through that, there are functions within this object which allow you to communicate with that, with like a live uh, instance of Python. So you could utilize any of the libraries that you might have uh, installed in Python, or you can, which includes um, you know, uh, the, the test, but example, which I'll show shortly. So this first example 
uh, is a system dynamics model. So there are some various stocks with some um, flows between them, which have their own mathematical equations. And then there are some three different uh, 2D plots, which kind of showcase how these uh, three stocks are interacting with one another. So what I did is I have a um, local Python file, which is relative to this any logic model, which utilizes the matplotlib library to display a live 3D plot. So there's some kind of basic setup for the plot, and then there's some uh, functions which are used as endpoints. So this uh, Python file will execute and be running in the background of the model. Um, and I'll be able to, to call these functions from within my any logic model, which is in Java. So when the model starts up, it will uh, create this Python instance. It will import that plotter file and then be able to call those, um, those functions. So if I go ahead and run this, see that. So here on the left is my any logic model and on the right is my live matplotlib 3D window, which I can then you know, see it from different angles and it's kind of uh, passing data from my any logic model and updating this plot. And so I can, there are some sliders here which allow you to kind of configure um, you know, how the interaction is happening and you could see that as I change one, it changes the other. And so the way that this, this happens is that through this cyclical event, it runs a, a function and specifically it runs the append function passing the actual data from my any logic model to that Python environment. The other nice thing about this library is that it um, is able to run in parallel with itself natively without any extra Java code. So if you have something um, like a certain experiment in any logic, which allows you to kind of run uh, parameters variation or Monte Carlo, these can all run in parallel without, uh, kind of, like I already said, without any extra code. So it kind of makes things easier on, uh, in terms of the implementation side of things. But why this might be more practical is in a situation where you have, um, where you have uh, data sets within Python that you train um, using let's say TensorFlow and you've trained it with your uh, test data and that's, you know, seems to be accurate, but you wanna kind of see how it uh, interacts in a kind of more dynamic environment. So in this example, it's a simple hospital and there are two different uh, trained networks that were trained at Keras, one for the arrival rate of patients and another one for the uh, length of stay based on certain attributes. And the overall goal is to figure out what an optimal capacity for this ho hospital is. And so there are sources to the original data sets below. So when this starts up, it imports those uh, H5 files, which are again, uh, similar to the other example in my model directory. And it interfaces uh, with that uh, Python environment through uh, various functions that are set up. So here you can see it's updating the arrival rate every four hours. And there's this delay block, which is um, getting the uh, length of stay time for any patients that are flowing through the system. And so there are some metrics where you could see uh, the daily arrival rate the, and other various metrics, such as you know, how many people are in the system and how many days they end up staying. And so you can kind of dynamically uh, change this and see how it impacts over time. So you can kind of find an optimal capacity for the hospital. And with that, that is both of these libraries. So I will turn it back to Arash to finish up. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Let me share my screen. Okay, um, just as a summary of what they discussed about the intersection of uh, simulation and, and uh, AI, we talked about three different, different categories of uh, use case, generating synthetic data, using simulation as the learning environment for reinforcement learning, and um, using simulation as the test bed for trained AI. And as you probably noticed, uh, as we discussed different technologies, 
we are completely aware of the fact that people uh, have different workflows, different uh, setups. And because of that, we are providing multiple alternatives for each of these um, um, kind of approaches. So we have things like any logic cloud that lets you to do things, um, use a model as a backend and just communicate with, it, with API and use the computational power of cloud or servers or you, you, we have connected libraries to Python like Alpine and Pipeline if you wanted to use um, your local machines and uh, or communicate with other languages like Python. Um, and we are also partnering with AutoML and AutoRL platforms like H2O.AI, Microsoft Project Bonsai and Pathmine to give you a variety of choices depending on what your workflow is. If you're a practitioner, if you're a researcher, if you are an enthusiast that wanted to try these, if you are a, like you wanted to even contribute to an open source projects, both Alpine and Pipeline are, are open source. If you want, we would be very happy to have you as, as uh, collaborators on those two projects. And that would be great. And uh, both of them are open source and um, you can contribute to them and see how that works. Maybe you can even utilize them for other applications as well. Um, so with that said, I wanted to, uh, just to finish off, I wanted to give you an overview of where to go in case you wanted to get more information. So this is any logic website. If you go to features artificial intelligence, here you get access to like, um, all of these platforms, Bonsai, H2O.ai, and Pathmine, there is a landing page for each of them. So you click on it and say, I wanted to kind of see more. You get to see all the connectors, everything that you need to download to make it work. You have example models here and kind of everything that kind of set up your uh, workflow. The, the next thing is the software itself. If you want, you go to download page and you can download different versions of any logic. If you are a student or just wanted to use it for personal use, you can use PLH, it is completely free. And now it has these RL experiments, which is also free. So you can use it with um, Bonsai or um, Pathmine if you want to. Um, and uh, you can export your simulation uh, or RL experiments to test those platforms as well. And professionals and, and researchers are like paid versions of any logic, but both of them are also available for uh, a month of free trial. If you want, please download them and um, take a look at the capabilities. If you want more information about this tool, what has been done with it, I suggest you to go to resources, look into white papers, case studies, big companies that have been using any logic for years, books, uh, several free PDF books are here, and video tours, you can look into uh, previous webinars and training materials. And if you're interested to get to a training, please register here and we will kind of, um, help you with learning any logic. Okay, so I have like a QR code for, for some of these links here. Uh, emails uh, for me, uh, Arash, Tyler, um, also here, specifically if you're interested in the, the uh, um, kind of the libraries and you wanna collaborate and you have questions, Tyler is available for you. And I, I put my colleague, David Kirby, uh, um, um, who is a, sales director in Enlogic North America email here in, in case you wanted to learn more about the pricing or a solution that works for your company, please contact David. And if you have any other questions from me, Tyler or David, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we, we are even interested to get your feedback in case you have some ideas that based on what you saw and you think that there is room for collaborations or things that uh, kind of works uh, uh, to improve this setup for you and uh, we can learn from you as well. So with that, thank you so much for attendance. We are ready for the Q&A session. Well, thank you, Arash and Tyler. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Um, yes. So for the learning addition of any logic, does it have the um, uh, capacity uh, for beginners and learners to explore what you have talked about today, like the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, reinforcement learning applications you have shown? Yes, so that's a great question. So uh, with the, um, so in the, the 
the free version has capability for, um, for uh, it has this new uh, experiment called RL experiment that lets it lets you to export models for both Pathmine and Banzai in case you are interested in automated RL. If you want to do everything manually, both, um, so you can use um, Alpine, which is a free um, kind of uh, library that you can freely download and uh, kind of make the connections uh, to your Python code locally. And uh, the same goes for a pipeline, which is another free open source library available for PLE users. And the software itself, the PLE version is very capable. It's actually the, the limitations are very generous. So definitely it cannot be used for a very like a large complex model, but the limitation is mostly on the licensing, not on the capability. So you are not allowed to use it for um, you know, professional or like uh, commercial use. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, the um, environment is really beautiful with so much uh, 2D and 3D visualizations. I I'm curious that when a user configure this kind of uh, visualizations uh, with all these animations, um, um, so on and so forth, Behind that, does the software also generate the associated Java code or? Um... Correct. Yes. Wow. So any, yes, any logic itself, when you build the model, you're using this graphical interface, a very, or high level ways of describing how that model works, mostly with flow charts. You will specify, for example, like let's say you are building uh, that car intersection that I showed with cars. You're using a flowchart to say where cars are coming from, how many of them are coming per like specific, uh, you know, um, time, and um, and then you kind of guide them with flowchart where they should go through, and then they leave the model. So that's a very high level declarative flowchart that you connect with a like an environment that you draw with um, elements that we call a space markup. So you draw like all the car, uh, the road intersections, let's say um, traffic lights and things like that. And then you connect that logical flow chart with the space markup to have the association. And when you run the model, like any logic definitely generates a Java code in the back end and um, kind of takes care of the, um, you know, the complicated, um, uh, kind of management of the events that are supposed to happen for the simulation. So you as a user are dealing with a very graphical, easy to use drag and drop uh, platform. So that's the objective of this software. Well, fabulous, thank you. I hope you will come back to give another talk uh, in the near future. And meanwhile, um, have a very happy uh, year end holiday season. Same to you and thank you for inviting us and uh, yeah, we definitely are interested to come back and maybe pick a specific topic and dive deeper into one of these. So this was an overview of everything, but there are a lot into any of these topics and we can definitely uh, kind of cover them in more depth in the future. So thank you again for the invitation and thank you for your time today. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording now.